Welcome to my reflection on chapter three of Living His Story, entitled Jesus Was in the Transformation Business. I hope you're enjoying this Lenten journey as much as I am. And if you can make it at 1 p.m. today on Zoom or any other Thursday in Lent for a further discussion, I would love to see you there. One Monday afternoon early on in my theological training, the lecturer caught us all unprepared when he asked us to get into pairs and film each other for one minute as we explained the difference Jesus had made in our lives. This was not what my friends and I had in mind for a post-lunch lecture. We hadn't known each other for that long and it was awkward to think that as future vicars we might do a bad job of this in front of each other. Luckily, there was no playback required, and we were all just left with our own recordings on our phones. I confess to have only played it back in full this week. Of course, I should have played it back much sooner, as its purpose was simply to help me grow in confidence, and, as the Apostle Peter puts it, to always be prepared to give an answer to anyone who asks me the reason for the hope that I have. So why does the thought of speaking of Jesus make us so uncomfortable? I wouldn't hesitate to recommend a restaurant, film or book that had changed my life to anyone, whether they asked me to or not. But when it comes to Jesus, we can feel awkward because people in our post-Christian culture might think that what we have to say is odd or that we're deluded. And what if we don't do a good job of it and we sell Jesus short? I think there are forces at work in the world that delight when we struggle to speak of him. And this makes me all the more determined to overcome my fears and to speak of the immeasurable difference that Jesus has made in my life. Cue my second confession. Sometimes, though, in my enthusiasm, I can be a bit one-sided and I can speak for too long. I need to remember to invite the other person to ask questions, to make it a conversation and not just a one-way story. The challenge as we practice telling our stories and speaking of Jesus is to be alert to where we can improve rather than be put off by where we think we may have failed. I don't believe that we need to worry about selling Jesus short though. If our intentions are good, then our efforts will be honoured and seeds will be sown. Whether they take root or not, is no business of ours. The transformation bit is God's department. The Apostle Peter and Hannah in this chapter strongly suggest though that our efforts would be improved if we were properly prepared. Transformation is big business in our culture. When something in our lives is transformed, particularly from the outside, we talk about it a lot. We photograph it a lot. We publicise it a lot. It could be weight loss, a reversal of a diagnosis, a new look or hairstyle. Our culture loves transformation. It would only seem sensible then to be prepared to talk of the only transformation we will ever experience that heals us thoroughly inside and out. When I need to prepare for something. It's not the story of a lecturer or a Christian sage that comes to mind, but one of Adele's. As a family, we were lucky enough to get tickets to one of her concerts in 2016, where in between the singing, the swearing and the banter, she relayed a short story about the importance of being prepared. She has permanently left me with the four Ps. Poor preparation leads to poor performance. Her story is now my story. 
stories stay with us. So then what kind of job did I do on my one minute video without preparation? Well, although it felt awkward and I looked a little uncomfortable to begin with, I did get the message across. Well, I convinced myself at least. And this will be the story for most of us, most of the time. If we step out confident in our experiences of Jesus, then we will be able to speak of them in a way that engages. Because God is gracious. Our stories can and will become part of other people's stories. All we have to do is be prepared to tell them. <laughs>